I'm in Manger Square, Bethlehem, with Father Issa from the National Orthodox Charitable Society. Now, Father Issa, what is the National Orthodox Charitable Society? Most welcome to be here in Bethlehem and in the, the, this society, the National Orthodox Charitable Organization. It's like things that we help the local people who live in Bethlehem. It was actually started in 1919 like a hundred years before and it was actually started by the priests who were in Bethlehem in the Nativity Church as to help over the people in Bethlehem who lives in poverty, who lives in uh, without any job or work, without any money and so this actually started to help the people who were in sickness, who were in, uh, in need. Was there a great amount of poverty at that time? It was actually very high uh, poverty because people at that time, they had no work. It has also cholera, it was the sickness, the cholera. And it was also many people died from the Christians and especially from the Orthodox people in Bethlehem at that time. So that's why the priests and the, the people, the local people who started out this organization or this society as to help over the people who, who are in need. So this was the church responding to the need at the time. Exactly, exactly. Uh, it must be exciting to have offices right here because you're right next to Nativity Church. That's right. And uh, so actually they were searching for a place uh, that to be close to the Nativity Church as to uh, to be in the center of Bethlehem as uh, because, you know, the Nativity Church all over the world looks to this place where Jesus was born. And so that's why this actually charitable society, it's just close to the Nativity Church and the most important place where actually we can help all the people, especially the Orthodox people who are in need and they come here daily to this society. Uh, being close to where Jesus was born, does that help you to keep your focus on why you're here? Yes, actually we have a vision and this is our vision and our like where we're following or where we're going to. So not just because we are close to the Nativity Church but because what does this society means for the people? It means everything that people are in need, they come direct to this society. They, they need like to pay for the hospital, for uh, the youth, especially who are in need in uh, the universities or schools, or the people e even in uh, need for any uh, things that they need in, uh, in their daily life. So we've heard what Bethlehem was like when your organization was started. What's Bethlehem like today? Have things changed? actually changed to, to the, even the worse because uh, it was before people have everything but now and it was actually the life it was easy more easier not as uh, this uh, technology and this uh, very high uh, level of living so before it was people live simple life and it was easier but now the people are in need for more more and things that's why this uh, society is here that's to help out all the people who are especially in need. So when you were started, it was cholera, and today it's corona. It's corona, <laughs> that's right. That's right, cholera, corona. And it's since 1919 till now, actually many of like uh, corona, cholera, many th sickness happens, many problems happens, even uh, the occupation, even many difficult things happened in Bethlehem, you know, especially Bethlehem, the center of uh, the, the, the world. and happens many problems and many difficulties. What sort of projects do you do in the organization? The projects actually we do many projects but especially we had some um, projects now uh, like for the scouts. We have this already projects uh, since a long time ago and we are working for the youth especially and we're trying to do a project for apartments for the youth people who are in need for a place because when they get married they don't have any place to live or uh, to rent. So that's why we need people to stay in Bethlehem and not to leave Bethlehem, that especially the Christian people who live in Bethlehem. That's why we, we are trying to keep the people here in Bethlehem and uh, to try to work many things for them as to stay, not to leave. Through what we do, uh, apartments, uh, schools, orphans, places, elderly uh, place for people, but still we are working for these projects. Now we have some projects uh, that we're trying to work. It's the apartments and like uh, a center for the youth to be in, like to have basketball players, soccer players, and even uh, different sports. 
Is the wage very low for a young person here in Bethlehem? Yes, it's very low. It's very low. That's why we are trying to, as you know, the youth, the most important things, because if, if there are no youth, there are no life, there are no any things to work or to fight for. So that's why we are trying to, to help out all the youth, especially because it's very low and no supports, no help for them. And many youth have left the city as well, haven't they? Yes, many left. Many, many of them left for study, uh, even in the universities outside Bethlehem. And many of them left for uh, no work, no jobs, no the most poverty. That's why they're looking for different, and not just for different, for free life, for happiness, for joyness. Because here in Bethlehem, there are no free life as to live. They are always like, almost live like in a prison, uh, nowhere to go, nowhere to work, and even uh, to study. As a priest, how does that make you feel when you're seeing your congregation leave? feels very sad because, uh, you know, my church, even uh, every year by year, you see less people, they're coming to the church. And especially now, we don't have uh, youth people. We have elderly people that they are stay there and whenever somebody died from them their place still empty so we know who comes here and who leave and who exactly about this so the youth here need a lot of help here in the holy land yes they are really in need and uh, we need to help them as to stay here in Bethlehem. That's why I'm uh, actually, I'm in uh, this old society, as I'm the, the prime minister of this, <laughs> this society, as to help the people out and uh, to be in between the people as to know what they are need and what exactly they have to, to do or to work or to find for them some, something for, to, to stay. Do you help students with their uh, studying to, yes. to pay the bills? Yes, tuition. We help actually about 200 uh, dinars per uh, semester. And we have about over 60 per uh, student, like over 60 students that they are in need, and especially who are they are in Bethlehem, and they are from uh, our church. Because, you know, it's like we're not helping only Orthodox, we're trying to help all people, but because of the lack of this uh, money and we don't have a lot of things to support, so we try to help out first our uh, local society from the Orthodox people. Would they not be able to study if it wasn't for your help? Yes, exactly. There are no, uh, if they can't actually uh, pay, the, the university will kick them out. They need to, to pay. So that's why our help is very good for them as to continue their study. Uh, do you have your own scout troop here? Yes, we have our own scout troop. It's followed for the, our, our society. It started out in 1929 and still we have a lot of activities there and we, uh, especially the activities that we do during Christmas time, uh, Easter time and uh, in different occasions that the scouts go out for this. And uh, we have a lot of activities during the days, every day, like especially the, this, at this time, with the summertime, that they have no place to go. The, the students, actually, when they finish their semester, they stay home. So this, actually, they go to the scouts, troops, and they do many different activities. And the scouts are very, very important here in Bethlehem, aren't they? Yes, you know, because it's very old from uh, the beginning started. And all the people actually looking for this uh, scouts, especially during, as I told you, the, the Christmas time and Easter time. Are there many poor families here at the moment? Yes, actually, uh, because I go every day to the people, I, and they s listen for their needs, uh, their problems. Many, actually, poor, especially after the corona time, you know, Bethlehem is work only for tourists, touristic area, and many of hotels here, many of souvenir shops, many of restaurants, many of different activities for uh, tourists, and actually, during this uh, corona time, it uh, makes people to go down very low level. So, so that's why they are all people now in need. Not before it was only the poor people. And now not only the poor people, the people who used to work and they lost their work. Has this made people question God? And has it made people actually come closer to God? One of the points, yes. They come, some of them, they come closer to God as to pray and to stick to prayers and to the church and for as a priest to come to their houses to pray as to see what is what makes these problems but most of the people actually they 
run away from God because they said he can't do anything. They uh, we don't find anything that God's really help us to do this. So they don't have patience. They don't have real faith. So that's why I'm telling the people to have the strong feelings uh, that God's is there that will help you over this. But you need to have strong faith and trust in God. And many people read the Bible. Not too many. Actually, we have a lot of Bibles here. If even we give it to the people, but not all people ask for the Bible. Sometimes I go to the houses. I find that the Bible just in, in a roof, in a rough, like in a way with a lot of dust. They don't read. They don't pray. They just need uh, easy life. They need money. They need to work out of their life and just to follow their needs without prayers. Even sometimes they pray, but not from deep their hearts. What is your message for people here in Bethlehem? My message is just uh, to let people to have more faith in God, to have uh, strong feelings that God is there, always looking for us, even not now, maybe after this in a while, and also to stick in this land, to the place where Jesus was born, to the place where our ancestors lived and uh, still living. And that's why I'm telling all people just to keep stay here in Bethlehem, not to leave, because we are the living stones. The living stones, I mean, the people, not the church and not the buildings, not everything, is the people who are living here. They are the living stones. How important is the Christian message for the rest of the world? It's very important, especially uh, for the people who live all over the world. The Christian people who live in Bethlehem, they have this great message as to send it all over the people, even the problems that we pass every day, even the occupation, even the hard life that we live. Still, we have this hope, this faith, this strong feeling that everything will be good. And we have especially the inner peace that we live. So that's why we let all the people to know that we're still here, we still exist, and we still fight for our lives. Uh, what are your hopes for the future? Hope to live in peace, especially this land where Jesus was born. is just born to give joy, love, and peace, especially. And we never had peace. So just my wish is to live in peace, to live with love, and with everything, with happiness. Why do you do what you do? Why I do what I do? Because I just love to be with the people, love God, the word of God. And what makes me do this, it's just to feel happy and very joyful. And when I need, when I help people, when I pray for people, when I do what I'm doing now, it just feel that God's message and God's help through me, that uh, makes a very great job that I'm doing. What's your website, Facebook page for people who'd like to know more? I have, like for the Orthodox Society, yes, we do have a website. It's Charitable Orthodox Society in Bethlehem. And you can find it in Facebook. We have a page. And even we have a website for this society. And the website address is oncs.ps. Oncs.ps. Okay, Father Isa, thank you much. Yes, you're welcome indeed. <laughs>